Hey guys, Providence here, and today I'm going over a more updated version of how to set up an EOS Source server. It is now 2013, and I'm going to be using the EOS Source Revision 5.8. So to get started, open your browser, let your home page load up, and afterwards go to eosource.net forward slash form forward slash index dot php. After that loads up, you'll come at the EOS Source forms. After you arrive there, go to Downloads and Server Revisions. As you can see on the Server Revisions page, all the previous versions of EOS Source have been cleared because they had glitches and also allowed players to abuse techniques to crash people's servers. So in order to prevent from people doing this, they cleared all the previous revisions and now they have 5.8 which is stable as of now so after you get to your download your your server revisions page you want to decide if you want to use an installation or a rar file now i recommend using rar because it's a lot faster but if you don't have winrar winzip or anything like that like those programs then you want to use the installation but i have winrar so i'm going to use the rar now it downloads very fast, and after it downloads, just open it up in WinRAR, minimize your browser, and before you extract it, make a folder of where you want to extract it to because it does not originally come in a folder and you'll just get a bunch of files in the directory you put it in. So after you make your folder, extract it to your folder, after that's done, close WinRAR, put your folder wherever you want and open your EOS source folder. Okay, now that your EOS source folder is open, you'll see all these files. Now some things you need to know is that one, you do not have editors anymore. That it well, I mean, it doesn't come with editors. So you cannot map or edit pubs until you download these things, which I will cover later on in this video. And two, you do not have a database. Now don't freak out because as soon as you run your server a database will automatically be created so those are just the two things you need to keep in mind before you try to skip ahead and do your own thing if you're still stuck now since we have EOS source downloaded it's time to let's see let's just port forward now so we're in the next step we are going to port forward what port forwarding does is it allows other players to connect to your server, which is very important if you want other people to play your server and your server to get popular. So to start port forwarding, there is some information you need to gather. And some of this information can be gathered through the CMD, also known as Command Prompt. Now to get to open Command Prompt, you would go to your Start menu and search CMD. I cannot do this because my recording device doesn't allow me to go to the corner of my screen. So I already have CMD open here. After you have CMD opened, you need to find out your IPs. So to figure this out, type in IP config, no spaces, all lowercase, and hit enter. After you hit enter, you want to look at your IP4 address and your default gateway. Your default gateway is the address that will allow you to connect to your router and your IP4 address will be used later on. You also need to know your IP address, but there's a website that can tell you this, which will be covered later on in the video. So now that you have your default gateway and your IP4 address, um, write it down or keep your command prompt open and go back to your browser. When you're back at your browser, open up a new tab and go to your default gateway. When you go to your default gateway, it will ask you for a username and a password. Now, if you do not know your username or password, there are many combinations of default logins, which is, can be found at this address right here. I'm not even going to try to attempt to pronounce this website, but I will post it under description in YouTube, or I will and I mean and I will also post it in the EOS source thread. So after you log into your router, you want to go to an area that has anything to do with like ports, servers, port forwarding, anything that has the word port in it pretty much. So 
I'm going to look and right here I have an area that's called port forwarding forward slash port triggering so I'm going to go to this area and since I was away from my keyboard for a while I'm going to have to log in again real quick so give me a second okay now that I'm logged in again and I can port forward, we want to add a new custom service or any or go, click any button that has anything to do with new or services and then you should get something that looks like this. Now not every uh, router is going to look the same and I have a Netgear. So I can't really help you all like completely 100% with port forwarding but I can give you a general idea of what it's going to be like. So in your service name you want to put EOSource because this is going to be for EOSource and the starting and ending point are both going to be 8078 and this is this internal IP address right here where it has 192.168.1. something this is where your IP4 address is going to come in handy my IP4 address ended in a 3 or my bad a 4 so I'm going to put 192.168.1.4 now I'm not all into computers like in this way so I can't really tell you why this number matters but you want you need to use the one for your computer as you can see I also have one here named Providence that is my iPod so if I put a 3 in there I it, the server probably wouldn't port forward and it probably wouldn't work so you want to use the IP4 address of your PC now when you have that all set up the name the port and the internal IP address hit apply okay save something like that and then you'll see that you have a new port for EOS source with a starting point of 8078 and also an ending port of 8078 okay now that your port forwarded you don't need to do anything else with your router you can just close out okay now that your port forwarded the next step in setting up your server would be to create a no IP what a no IP does is on the SLM page where it shows the host instead of displaying your IP address which is very hard for players to remember it will show a bit of text and this text can be something that is relevant to your server name see as for Fallen Evolution their host is game.fallenevolution.com because it's relevant to Fallen Evolution to set up a no IP go to www.noip.com which will bring you to a page that looks like this depending on when you watch the video now when you get to this noip.com it's free to sign up or if you already have an account go to my account now you, when you go to my account you'll end up at a page that looks like this and to add a host simply click the button that says add a host now when you get to, when you click add a host you'll get to a page that looks like this for your host name simply just put in that's pretty much your server name so if my server was awesome server then I put in awesome server as my host name now there, you have a limited supply of free domains everything above this free domains text is obviously not free so everything under it is free and you see the most common three used here no-ip.org.info and .biz now when you choose your domain extension whatever this is called and you have your host name typed in you're done you don't have to change the host type the IP address should automatically be your IP address and everything else is good so you can scroll down and hit update host when you hit update host it'll take you to a page that um, shows you all of your hosts since I'm not since I don't have any hosts my host area will be empty but if you did everything correctly your host should appear somewhere in this area now after your host is created copy the IP URL to your clipboard and close that in no IP because you don't need it any longer N now since we have our no IP our EO source files and we are port forwarded we are ready to start editing the EO source files to start our server to start editing your EO source files, go into the config.ini. When con the config.ini opens, hold down Ctrl and F to open the find prompt. When the find prompt opens, type in SLN and press enter. This will bring you down to the SLN options area. In the, in the SLN options area, the first thing you see are accounts. Accounts such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. 
if you have accounts that are meant for your server, it's recommended to, pick, to put the links in here. So when people go to EO Sources SLN, they can see your Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus accounts. After you add your accounts, you can go down to SLN URL. The SNL, SLN URL decides where your server will appear. If you leave it at the default, it will appear both on EO Sources website and EO Serves website. But if you change it to EO Sources SLN website, then it will only appear on EO Source and not on EO Serve. After you uh, choose your SLN URL, this is where you paste your no IP in the SLN host. After you paste that, you can go down and see SLN site. And the SLN site is a website that you may have created just for your server. And just paste that in there. And when you go to the SLN, and if you click on your server name, it will direct you to your website. Server name is pretty straightforward. It's the name of your server. Like if, like we saw earlier, Fallen Evolution, all you have to do is that, and it will appear as Fallen Evolution on the site. Now, for every little area here you do not need quotes for example if your host was awesome server dot no ip dot org you do not need quotes you take away the quotes just have a space between the equal sign and where you start typing and it will recognize it you don't need quotes after you have edited these things you can also decide your sln zone which is if your server is still in the beta area or you're just testing things out you can type in test and it will appear in the test zone and not the public zone. After you edit these things, you pretty much have you don't need to edit anything else in the config.ini. You can close it out, be sure to save it. Now that you have the SLNs already set up in the config.ini, it's time to edit the two main things that affect servers when they first start out the starting point and the def spawn. If characters start out at a point that doesn't exist in the server, then the server is going to crash. If characters die to a map that doesn't exist, they're going to quit. So the things that you need to do to prevent this is edit the starting point and edit the def spawn. To edit the def spawn, go into data and then the home.ini. When the home.ini opens, scroll all the way down and you'll see a home already been created at the end. It's level.0 because characters start out as level 0. The name can be anything you want. And remember, don't use quotes. Now the location is the map number followed by the map X followed by the map Y. So say your first map is 5, be sure to make it 5 followed by a valid X and a valid Y. After you edit that, be sure to save it and go back and go into the config.ini to edit the start location. Press control F and put in location. Hit enter once and twice. Then scroll down a little bit and you'll see a start map, a start X, and a start Y. Be sure these are the same as your beginner def spawn, or you can change it to something different depending on how your server plays out. So to recap, you downloaded the EOSource 5.8 revision, you port forwarded, you created a no, a no IP, and you've set up the basics to start out your server. Now you're going to have, you have everything you need to start your server, but you don't have what you need to edit your server. So this is where I'm going to cover where you can download the editors. To download the editing software you need to edit your EOSource server, go to your browser and head over to EOS the EOSource's form. When you get there, go back to downloads, but this time go to EO Tools instead of server revisions. What I recommend you get is Edit Pub and Pub Edit because you might like one better than the other. Also get EOSEP Map Editor and EOSERV Map Editor. These tools are very important in running an endless, or an endless online server. Also, if you plan on having a server with updated graphics, you want to get Resource Hacker so you can add them into your server. After you download all these editors, I recommend you make a folder in your EO source files named Editors. And then furthermore, make individual for folders for each tool inside of that it's for easy and organ and for easy access and nice and neat organization. And that's it. You're ready to start your server. You're ready to edit your server. So open the EO source application or the EO source GUI. Open your endless online client. Sign on to your server. Create an account. Log in. And most importantly, enjoy EO source. Now, if you have any questions on how to edit your server further, 
you need to make posts on the EO source form. Alright, that's been your tutorial, and this has been Providence. See you later.